Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with a pen review. Now this pen is a bit of a mystery. I don't know anything about it. Couldn't find anything else out about it either. Um, I did a pen mail video uh, fairly recently, which, um, which included this pen. And I'll put a link in the description down below. Uh, so have a look down there and um, I'll put the link in so you can see this pen and other pens that arrived. Uh, this is a uh, Monte Lovis fountain pen. Monte Lovis, don't know. Um, I believe it's probably German. Uh, it came as a freebie from yesteryear's fountain pens with a pen that I purchased from them, which was the uh, the first Mont Blanc that I've ever purchased. So it's a Mont Blanc Turbo that's included in the pen mail video. Uh, so have a look at that. Um, this pen, didn't really understand anything about it. I've had a bit of a search around on the interwebs, can't find much information. But it's quite a nice, classy looking pen. A little bit of a different design to anything else that I've had or even seen. Um, and it just came in a Monte Lovis box, which didn't tell me a great deal about it. And there doesn't seem to be any markings on the pen either, so there is no branding whatsoever, which is bit strange for something which clearly is some sort of fashion type item and I was a bit dubious about how well this pen would actually write but spoiler alert it's actually pretty good so let's have a look at the pen it is an all metal pen and I believe it's probably steel it's not excessively heavy um, but it's certainly not a, la a, a Lamy all-star type aluminium material so we'll just compare these two pens side by side. So you can see here, very similar length. Monte Lovis is mm, just about, just less than a centimetre longer capped. And the Lamy All-Star Tourmaline is lighter than this pen. Uh, but there's not much in it. And as you know, I don't go into weights and dimensions because unless there's something significant in there, I don't feel that giving you a load of facts and uh, well figures um, is going to really add anything to this. But if something's heavy or light and it's significant, I will get the scales out and weigh it so you can see what it actually weighs. So, nice metal pen. Pop that to one side. Um, on the top, there is this... Whoa, try and focus. There we go. There is like a black plastic insert inside there, which is an unusual sort of finial. Nothing at the bottom end, domed, polished uh, finial there. And we have this sort of nice tapered design. So it's torpedo shaped but tapered. We have this great big long unembellished finial with a black plastic band. Um, clip is unadorned apart from this slight engraving at the top which doesn't seem to mean anything it's a very very tight stiff clip um, but very functional and as you can see it's got this uh, I don't really know what sort of pattern it is it's not like a barley corn it is similar to some of the old um, vintage Schaefer uh, finishes on their fountain pens. So it's got this, it's like a, it's not a diamond pattern, but it's, it's that type of, uh, of finish. And it, it's, it's quite tactile. Um, it's not sharp or anything like that. It's very, very smooth, but it is, it's, it's very tactile. There's a black plastic band there, plain cap band, tapered barrel, down to something very similar to the cap, mirrors this, uh, this, so this part here. So we have a black plastic insert, metal finial. Unclip to po uh, to uh, uncap, and the cap has got a liner in there. No problems with this drying out, and this has got a medium steel nib. Um, so it's probably a number five nib, it's quite small. Uh, there is a black plastic uh, end there with a small patch of uh, 
metal with a black plastic section. Um, the section is a little bit short, but comfortable, and there's virtually no step up to the barrel. So really, really quite smooth. Just about feel it under my thumb there, but it's absolutely fine. Really nice length in the hand, very nice weight, not too heavy. I must admit this is not a heavy pen. And does it post? Yes, it posts, and it posts really securely, deeply, and everything else. So you've got a very nicely um, sized, classy looking pen. Posted, it adds the weight back to the um, back to the pen, but it isn't back heavy because it does post so deeply. I mean, it really is quite a deep posting pen. It's really nice and comfortable to write with if you post it. But still a decent length on posted and a nice light weight for a metal pen. Now this pen came with a converter, not the uh, most expensive converter I've ever seen and to be honest not the best. Um, this is a little bit cheap and plasticky and it doesn't get a full fill of ink. So let's write down what this pen is before we get onto the writing sample. Medium steel nib, Monte Lovis. Now, if any of my viewers have any idea what this model number of this pen might be, then please do leave a comment down below because it'd be really helpful. And um, if you do that, then I'll update the um, description of this video and the title accordingly. Uh, which, so thanks in advance for that. So let's get straight on to the writing sample. Right, now you notice this ink has got some, it's not skipping or anything like that. That is purely this ink, um, which I shall write down for you now, because it is a very unsaturated ink. Jeroban the degree, green grey. Um, which in some pens, really wet pens, is quite dark. Um, but in this pen, and certain other pens obviously, it can be quite unsaturated. I think it's a really, really nice, classy looking vintage sort of colour. Um, it is grey green. It's really, really nice. Now this nib, um, I'll just do the wetness first. It's not a wet ink, bear that in mind, but I find it's a medium to dry wetness. But there are no issues whatsoever with this pen keeping up with the flow. And it writes for pages and pages, no issues there. As far as line variation, light pressure, more pressure, so you do get some line variation out of it. Um, reverse writing is just very, very dry. runs out of ink so it's not that sort of uh, not that sort of nib at all um, it's not scratchy it's just not performing well um, so what do I think of this pen and the nib well to be honest I'm actually really quite surprised it's for what I'm assuming is a branded um, some sort of branded uh, pen it, it's pretty good and it does a very nice job of writing I like it. I think it's a very nice looking pen. This ink really suits it quite well in my uh, personal opinion. I think it's got very classy late 20th century style design. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just something a little bit different for my fountain pen collection. Um, do I know anything about else about it? No, I really, I've, I've tried, I've searched, and I, I just can't find anything. And because it came from yesteryear's fountain pens, who obviously do specialise in vintage pens, I'm guessing that this is something which isn't in production anymore. 
Um, I'm, I mean, this, this, as far as I was, I was concerned, mint in box, new old stock, whatever you want to call it, they obviously had this kicking around and probably tried to uh, sell it at some point and it just didn't sell mainly because nobody um, really knew very much about it. You can tell it's summer around here, everyone's driving around with the uh, car windows down and the music up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, do I like this pen? Absolutely, I think it's a really, really nice design. Any disadvantages? No, not really. I mean, okay, it's not the world's best nib, but it does the job. And it writes, and I've had no issues with it drying out, unused, anything like that. Um, so it's, it, it is, in my view, a very good quality pen. Caps nicely, uncaps easily, and it's secure and all the rest of it. So, really, really, really pleased with this pen, especially as it was free. It's always good to get a free pen, and when it's a free pen, that's actually really nice. Top, no top marks to um, yesteryear's fountain pens once again, so thank you to them for that. And do I give it a thumbs up? Yep, yeah, definitely gets a thumbs up. If you can find any information out about this uh, this particular Monty Lovis pen, then I'd really appreciate a comment down below. It would be uh, much appreciated. It would help other viewers as well, because I couldn't find anything else out about this pen on the internet. So, yeah. <laughs> this is, as far as I can, uh, can find, the only information uh, about it. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful, and I shall see you next time. Bye.